Hello people, in this video let us look at what happens if there is bilateral adductor paralysis of the vocal folds. Now, uh, what do you see here? You see that uh, the vocal folds are, uh, uh, the vocal folds are usually, this is the neutral position, that is the intermediate position, okay, somewhere here, this is how the new, uh, neutral position will be. It is also called as cadaveric position, there will be no abduction and no adduction. So, if it wants to adduct, it has to come this side, right, if it wants to adduct. If it wants to abduct, so this is the way it has to go, right. So, here what are they saying? Here they are saying that there is adductor paralysis. So, it cannot come to the median position, median paramedian position, it cannot come. So, the only way how it can go, it can go on, it can get only abducted, okay. So, what is working? The posterior cricoarytenoid, these are the only muscles that are working. All the muscles which adduct are paralyzed. So, posterior cricoarytenoid which abducts, right, only those are working. So, usually the vocal cords will be what? Apart, right, they will be apart. So, if they are apart, what will happen? You can breathe very well, but you cannot speak very well, right, because the vocal folds are far apart. So, now what will happen? If there is, uh, if the person eats, right, he may swallow food into the trachea. Why? Because the vocal folds are apart. He is not able to close the vocal folds. That is the whole problem. Adductor paralysis. Now, which and all nerves could have got affected here? Everything other than what supplies the posterior cricoarytenoid. Everything else other than that, are the nerves are affected. Interestingly, the uh, la recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies the posterior cricoarytenoid and all other muscles except the cricothyroid. So, somehow this recurrent laryngeal nerve is supplying posterior cricoarytenoid because the abduction is working, but all other muscles the cricothyroid and all other muscles are gone. So, the recurrent laryngeal nerve seems to be working only for posterior cricoarytenoid. How is it possible? This is a very unusual, um, this is an uncommon condition, but they just want you to know what will happen if there is bilater, bilateral adductor paralysis. That means only abduction is working. So, causes here could be surgical, accidental trauma, uh, pressure on cervical nodes, neoplasms, etc. Anyways, <clears throat> what will be the clinical features? So, here what will happen, there will be inhalation of food because the vocal folds cannot come near, right? Inhalation of food, strange, right? So, the food is going into the trachea and uh, pharyngeal secretions give rise to cough and choking fits. Cough and choking fits. Voice is weak and husky. Yeah, because he cannot talk, the vocal cords are apart. Voice is... Voice is weak and husky okay so the uh, cough choking fits what they are saying is um, the pharyngeal secretions uh, give rise to this cough and choking fits okay now what is the treatment for this you have to bring the vocal folds close but if you bring the vocal folds close then he cannot uh, yeah he can still abduct so he can breathe isn't it okay so what is the treatment now for this case Treatment for bilateral adductor paralysis. So, he is able to abduct. So, if you bring them together, then he can talk also and he can abduct by himself, isn't it? So, uh, depends on the cause. So, whatever the cause is, you will have to fix that. Fix the cause. So, cases due to neuritis may recover spontaneously. Patients with repeated aspiration may require tracheostomy tracheostomy why do they need tracheostomy because of for uh, to prevent aspiration okay okay then so how are they doing this tracheostomy with a cuffed tube and an esophageal feeding tube okay they need tracheostomy and and a esophageal feeding tube so, they are directly going to put the food into esophagus, is it? So, instead of going through all that, decide whether it will go to trachea or esophagus, directly put it into esophagus. Epiglottopexy is an operation to close the laryngeal inlet to protect the lungs from repeated aspiration. It is a reversible procedure. Now, this got even more weird. Epiglottopexy is an operation to close the laryngeal inlet to protect the lungs. Then how will the air go in? So, you are going to protect the lungs from repeated aspiration. It is a reversible procedure. But what are you doing here? You are going to close the laryngeal inlet. 
Okay. What they are saying here in the textbook is that epiglottopexy is an operation in which the epiglottis is folded backwards. This is posterior, folded backwards and fixed to the arytenoids. Here are the arytenoids. So as to prevent aspiration into the lungs. This is a reversible procedure. So if you're sticking these two together, then how the person is breathing? So you should give them a tracheostomy or something else to breathe. So that's it guys, so that covers this uh, bilateral adductor paralysis, okay. So remember in bilateral adductor paralysis, uh, they will, the uh, vocal cords will be wide apart. So they cannot bring it close. So basically they cannot talk properly and as it is open, they will be inhaling food. Okay, that's all for now. Bye-bye.